Today we're going to be talking about a race that can take the nanosite to a whole new level of weird. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to need a drink for this one. The name of the creature is Spathinae, and it is found in Alien Archives number 3 on page 100. Let's get the meat and potatoes out of the way first, let's talk about the stats. To get started, we have your ability score adjustments. You're going to get plus two dexterity, plus two wisdom, minus two to constitution. This one is an interesting choice for the nanosite because it's one of its primary stats, but you can make up for this in point by. Come to think of it, this class would actually make a pretty good mystic as well. Now your hit points are gonna be a little bit on the low side. You're only gonna have three of them. And for your size, you're going to be considered a medium monstrous humanoid. Just to bring you up to speed on what a spathinae is, if you don't know, a spathinae is a collection of bugs and they form a humanoid figure. Now these bugs can be anything from insects to moths to grasshoppers, whatever, as long as there's enough of them that they form a being. Now you need to know all of this beforehand to have these next couple of abilities make sense. Shapeable is the first ability. Now the colony, if given enough time, can reshape themselves. They can form a new being. They can literally give themselves more arms. Or they can regrow a limb if it's been lost. And they can do all of this within one minute. They can wear regular armor, however, if it hasn't been specifically fitted for them, then there are a few abilities that they cannot use, like flexibility or the fly speed. Speaking of speed, the Spathinae will have 30 feet of ground movement. They will also have 20 feet of extraordinary fly speed. A Spathinae colony also gets special defense against critical hit effects, bleed, paralysis, sleep, and stunning effects. A colony also has blind sense vibration at 30 feet, as well as dark vision at 60 feet. Now with swarm flexibility, because a spathinae is a collection of smaller creatures, it's much harder to bull rush them, it's much harder to grapple them, it's also a lot harder to trip them up. This is what gives them that plus four racial bonus. If you're trying to break away from a grapple, they always have the ability to take 10 on the roll and any acrobatics checks related to tumbling or kind of getting out of those grappling maneuvers, they also gain a plus four acrobatics check. Now Spathinae also gain the vermin-like ability. I wouldn't really call this an ability, but more of a classification. The colony counts both as a monstrous humanoid and vermin. Now, if you have an effect that targets one or the other, then the swarm is targeted by this effect. If you have an effect that targets both monstrous humanoid and vermin, then you will go with one whichever is higher or worse. And because of this vermin-like, they will also gain plus two against mind-affecting abilities. Now, before we go into what the Spathinae are, what they're like, where they come from, if you're enjoying the video today, please let me know by hitting the thumbs up button. And if you want to get more like this from myself, then please hit subscribe with the bell notification. And if you're checking things out there, don't forget to check out the link for Patreon as well. Now, as I mentioned, the Spathinae are an insect race and they occupy many worlds throughout the vast. There is a huge amount of variety for the types of creatures that can form a whole colony. A common feature among all of these is that they are typically around one inch long and there's thousands of them. I would argue that there is a mild psychic connection here, although the book doesn't specifically say it. The only way that I can see these creatures coming together, not only forming neural pathways, but they also do this biologically as well. So there has to be some form of mild or latent psychic connection here to at least have that connection form. Now, when a colony actually takes a shape of a creature, a humanoid, they refer to themselves in plural. And when they do speak, it has a buzzing quality to it because it's thousands of voices from different insects or different individual insects or creatures speaking as one. Any creature that the colony takes the shape as, it has a head, but it is more of a featureless head. 
Now the colonies as a whole, they do prefer to have armor tailored to them. It's not that they dislike wearing armor, but when it's designed for them or when it's specific for them, it's like the colony can assign roles to it. You have one group organizing or holding up the body armor. You have another part of the colony working the gloves, working the hands, so they can operate individually and still have the benefits of being a swarm. Now these colonies also realize that when you are a single creature with one body mass, your flesh and your bone, that's the only thing that makes your existence, they realize that creatures that are like this can have difficulty understanding that a Spathene colony is different. The colony is made up of individual members. Each of these members have their own name, but the colony also recognizes that you can't address thousands of individual names, and so they will typically just go with a name for the swarm. And because of the neural pathways that a swarm has developed, they also share one consciousness. There is one set of memories that is distributed among all of its individual members. It is also possible for a colony to die without all of its individual members dying. If enough of them are damaged or wounded, hurt, whatever, it can damage the neural and biological pathways. And once the group consciousness has faded or dissipates, that's death. Now the individual members who were still remaining of the colony, they can still join something else. They can go to another swarm. They might grieve at least for a little while about the loss of their previous consciousness, but this is really a short-lived thing as once they join a new colony and they form those new neural pathways, they then start to make up a new part of the consciousness. And while such a death of a personality or a soul, if you will, is tragic, the Spathene look at this as just part of life. They tend to not grieve very long. Provided that there are new additions to the colonies, it is technically possible for a Spathene to live forever, in the sense that their consciousness never dies. The individuals might, but the colony as a whole survives. The memories survive. If you were able to talk to one of the individuals that made up a colony, they would also tell you that it is their main prerogative for ensuring the colony's survival. Individualism is completely put aside unless it saves the colony. And while Spathene can be found on many worlds in the vast, they do not know where they actually come from. Any records of their originating planet were lost in the gap. And most colonies wouldn't really care where they come from either. When I keep saying colonies, just think of it as referring to a person or a consciousness. As they've expanded and lived a little bit longer, they have started to take a minor interest in trying to dig up the past and figure out where they came from. Colonies are always learning. They are always eager to explore and find new things. Because of this, many Spathene colonies tend to worship Oras. And when they have ventured into other societies, they have generally been treated fairly well. Most societies recognize Spathene colonies as an individual. And when you're recognized as an individual, you have certain rights and certain freedoms that are attached to this. And most planets or most societies will recognize this. There is one, however, that doesn't. And it should come as no surprise that it's the Islanti. Because to them, insects or anything less than human has no rights and doesn't deserve to be treated as a person. Now, the Islanti claim that they hail from Galorion and come from one of the first major human civilizations there, or one of the greatest civilizations there, if you hear them tell it. This first great colony or empire was known as Aslant, and they had actually started exploring planets on their own thousands of years ago. Unfortunately for those who went off exploring planets and finding new worlds and civilizations, vast majority of the time it did not work out well for the explorers. Aslant was also destroyed later in a planet-destroying cataclysm. One outpost survived, and that happened to be on New Thespera. Now because they were also cut off from their homeworld, their network of magical portals, it also stopped working. 
Now the Aslanti were also very technologically advanced and they were very advanced in terms of magic and they used both to help settle the planet that they, that they were on. Which eventually led to them conquering and ruling over their neighbors with an iron fist. And then when the drift happened, that allowed them to start exploring other star systems. And by explore, I mean they went out, waged war, conquered, and subjugated everyone. And this is what gave rise to the Aslanti Empire. New Thespera became the seat of power for the Aslanti Empire, and it orbits around a star, Aristia. There is a particular family or a dynasty that has ruled the Aslanti Empire for the last 2,000 years or so. This would be the Ixomander Dynasty. All of the cities that can be found on New Thespera, they are magnificent in their architecture. They are very advanced culturally and they outwardly express great appreciation for learning. But to anybody who is under the Aslanti rule, these buildings, these cultural centers, they are symbols of oppression. The mansions, the museums, the palaces, they are all built on the backs of slave labor and they are furnished with relics stolen from conquered empires. If you would like to learn a little bit more about the Aslanti Empire, then please check out the video on your screen now. Thank you to all of my patrons for supporting me. You make all of these videos possible. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.